Good morning all. Um, welcome to today's Realistically Better 10 minute topic. What is a 10 minute topic? Um, it's essentially 10 minutes talking about a specific modeling topic, really. Um, it's a new series focusing on helping you build better models and uh, dioramas. I shan't really be doing any demonstrations as such. I'm just going to talk about stuff, take your questions, we'll have a bit of a discussion, that kind of thing. So it's a new thing, might do it once, twice a week, and we'll see how we go. So if you don't know me, I am Justin Noble from Scale Model Scenery and also co-founder of Railway Modelers Club, um, which is what you're watching this on now. I would say, I'd like to say, hopefully the internet's most friendly um, modeling community. That's probably a bit of a, a claim to make, but I'm pretty confident that we are probably one of the most friendliest places. Owner of Scale Model Scenery, or co-founder of Scale Model Scenery with my wife, Tina. Um, and I know a lot of you know me already, but I'm just saying for anybody watching this for the first time, uh, we produce over 1,500 laser cut, 3D printed and printed media kits to make your layouts realistically better. So each episode, um, aims to answer some of your common uh, model building questions and if I keep looking over there it's because my prompts are on the screen there so I'm trying to remind myself of what to say um, and I'll be sharing hints and tips on how to make your layouts better okay this week's topic or today's topic is um, modeling roads in double O gauge we're going to deep dive into a couple of questions about roads uh, the first one is how wide should a double O gauge road B. Uh, the second one is what is the steepest gradient you can get away with without it looking silly which I think um, Steve asked yesterday on the club and also Rachel asked about colours so if we've got time we'll cover colours if not we'll cover colours in the next session which will probably be next Tuesday-ish so um, that's if we've got time so anyway we're going to deep dive into how wide a road should be and gradients so how wide should a double O gauge road be it's actually the number one question on Google to do with double O gauge modeled railway roads. So there is no simple answer to road width, unfortunately. It's one of those kind of, as Tina said this morning, isn't that one of those how long is a piece of string kind of questions? And the answer is yes, it is. It's a how long is a piece of string. Um, road widths vary massively depending on location. Is it an urban road? Is it in a rural area? Is it a built up area? Is it obviously motorway? much wider than anything else it varies on the type and volume of traffic the age of the road um, roman roads might tend to be slightly wider as i was just discussing with stuart yesterday um, and they're very straight roman roads um older roads in sort of more tightly packed um, urban areas particularly um, around older cities that kind of thing tend to be very small very narrow um, you get a lot of streets where there's terrace houses on both sides and perhaps you can get one row of cars down one side and there's just enough room to get another car down the other side and you know passing is an absolute nightmare um so age of the road modern housing estate roads will tend to be slightly wider because there's room for parking on the roads and you can get you can get two cars past so it's things like that they're a lot wider also the designation of the road is it an a road a b road a country lane a single track lane or single track road motorway etc will have a bearing on how wide the road should be so there is no simple answer unfortunately so what we've done is we've compiled a bit of a table together for you um, we've put it on uh, the scale model scenery blog but you can access it quite easily by going to myrm.club forward slash roads that's myrm.club forward slash roads with an s roads plural so jump onto there and you can see there's a table part way down we've gone into real Hopeful, hopefully decent detail on how to model a road or how wide they should be on there but I'm going to cover it in the basics today so each road type kind of has a road width range highways agency admitted uh, in 2007 I think it was I know, there was one of these freedom of information requests on roads. somebody asked how wide should UK roads be probably going to get on a high horse and complain about things and say you know this, my roads too narrow this and the other where I live but anyway they said there is no hard and fast rule because roads are different ages different places that, that to do with geography and all the rest of it road widths vary massively um, the classification of roads depends on whether it's kind of the only route to certain places, the width of the road, the amount, the amount of traffic and all that kind of thing. 
So whether it's an A road or B road, uh, you know, so they, they, to control traffic flow and things, they'll designate certain roads as A roads, some as B, and then obviously motorways are different. But there is no hard and fast rule as far as the width is concerned. The best thing to do is to have a look on Google Maps and just get an idea of the sort of areas you're kind of modeling look at the width of cars and vehicles that you can see in the aerial shots and work out the proportions and go okay well that car is roughly you know two-thirds of that lane okay so here's my model car i'm gonna it's a hot wheels ford sierra i think um so there's my model car that's going to be two-thirds of the width of my road i'm going to make my road sort of that wide that kind of thing so that's the quickest and easiest way of doing it if it looks right it probably is right Anyway, we've compiled the table to just help you kind of get a bit of a head start. In general, looking at loads and loads of websites yesterday, driving myself up the wall and disappearing down lots and lots of rabbit holes, minor roads tend to be 10, uh, 14 to 20 feet wide. That's a two lane sort of, not quite country lane, but a minor road. Not a B road, but you know, probably is classed as a B road, but not what you consider as being a, a main road kind of thing. Country lane, 12 to 17 feet wide. B roads, similar to the country roads, 14, 14 foot up to 40 foot. With a lane width for a two lane, you know, up and down road, up to 12 feet wide for a lane width. Then you've got uh, A roads, which are usually 24 to 46 foot. Again, up to 12 foot lane width usually typically all these are typical measurements at the end of the day if you've got space you want to do whatever you you know it's up to you it's whatever looks right is right um motorways obviously three lanes some two lane in certain areas a m42 in a few places and i think the m62 going into liverpool is two lane in certain places um where there's bits that you know feed off to the left or whatever uh most ways three lane take up an awful lot more room on a layout in fact, up to 288 millimetres for a motorway, um, just for the carriageways, let alone, you know, not even considering the central reservation, the hard shoulder and everything else, dual carriageways. So a dual carriageway, that would be up to 12 foot for each, obviously each, each lane. So you've got 24 feet on one side, 24 feet on the other side, so 48 millimetres, you know, but it's just, it's such a, it varies so much. So in double O gauge, when you convert those measurements over to double O gauge for a minor road, which is 14 to 20 foot wide, a minor road, you're looking at roughly 28 millimetres up to 40 millimetres. For a full road width with two lanes both sides, 56 millimetres up to 80 millimetres. Single track road, uh, which is 12 foot to 17 foot, you're looking at 48 mil to 68 mil. They're so quite wide actually, you probably take up more room than perhaps you realise. A road, particularly to up to dual carriageways, you're looking anywhere from 96 millimetres up to 184 millimetres. The large 184 mil would be for a, a dual carriageway, 96 millimetres for just a normal, whatever you call it. It's not two lane, but you know what I mean, up and down. Standard two-way carriageway, I'll do two-way. Probably not the right technical term, but I'll go with that. Uh, then you've got B roads, 80 to 96 millimetres. So this, the table we've put together should give you a head start. At the end of the day, it's not a hard and fast thing. You can do whatever you want with it. And I've just realised this probably won't be a 10 minute topic because it's now 10.30, it's more like 20 minutes, but anyway. Um, so there is no hard and fast rule, but the table we've put together at myrm.club forward slash roads should help you get started. So generally, what do you do? If it looks right, it is right look at the real thing take notice when you're out walking pay attention to the width of cars in front of you when you're driving don't concentrate too hard on the car in front when you're driving pay attention to your driving but just make a make a sort of brief mental note go okay yeah i'm following this lorry there's not much there's about a couple of feet either side or whatever make a mental note jot it down whenever you can when it's safe to do so and you've got a note to refer to use google maps make a rough estimates again off of the the uh, vehicle sizes Stuart did say yesterday, obviously, that vehicles vary throughout the years. If you look at look at an Austin, whatever it was, A40 or something, a lot wider, or A whatever the other one is, A30, a lot narrower than a modern car. Um, so you need to pay attention a little bit, depending on the area you're modelling. How wide would a you know an original Mini be? How wide would a Morris Minor be? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Use but use the proportions. Obviously, a lot of roads still exist, even back 
you know, that have been around for hundred and something years. So the roads are still there because the houses have been there. So the road width won't have changed. Use a model car, grab a car, grab a bus, lorry, whatever. Stick it on your layout and just get a rough idea. Could you know? Could you get two people in that area, in that space, both sides of it? Could if you if a vehicle was passing another parked car? Excuse me, looking at my desk while I'm playing with toy cars. Um, could you get one car past another? Could a, if you put the two two vehicles going either way and they both pulled over slightly? Could you get an emergency vehicle through the middle? That kind of thing, just to give you a rough idea. At the end of the day, if it looks right, it's right. There's no answer. The other topic I want to cover this morning quickly before it's coffee time is uh, gradients then. This is the question that Steve asked. Um, what's the steepest gradient you can get away with without looking silly? Can you guess the answer to this one? Would you believe it? There's no hard and fast rule to this at all. Um, I was doing some Googling yesterday, more Googling, and it turns out that the steepest road in England is actually a place in Bristol called Vale, Vale Street, Vale Road, Vale Street, I think and it's a one in two gradient. That means for every one foot you travel, uh, for every two feet you travel, you're going up one foot. That's steep. I thought Vicarage Hill in Mervagissi was steep, but one in four, but one in two, that's blooming steep. So there isn't really a hard and fast rule. I would say if the steepest road in England is one in two, anything less than that, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. So it really is, again, if it looks right, it definitely is right. There's a quick way to model gradients as well. If you want to do a one in 10 gradient, you can use something, you just use any measurement. You don't need to work in inches or feet, um, inches or millimeters or anything. There's no specific way of doing this. You can work in coffee cups or blocks of wood or whatever you want to do. A one in 10 gradient means that for every 10 of whatever measurement you're using, you go up one. So if you're using a block of wood that is two by two, you want 10 blocks of two by two. So that distance, and you go up one block of two by two. So you do it again with a Lego block or whatever. If a Lego block is what, 10 mil tall say, and it's 15 mil wide, you just do a bit of calculation. You can work out that roughly for every, it won't be 10 Lego blocks, but let's say it is. Let's say a Lego block is square, and it's you know the same height as it is width. 10 Lego blocks, you go up one Lego block for every 10 across. And all you've got to do is put your block at the end and go from your baseboard up one block across the space of 10, put your plank of wood, your bit of cardboard, whatever it is, over the top, and there you go. That's it, you've got a one in 10 gradient. Really simple. So one inch every 10 inches, one centimeter every 10 centimeters, one foot every 10 foot, you've still got a one in 10 gradient, regardless of what size you're working. Working in an gauge, fine, go with 10 centimeters. Working in double O gauge, go with inches, whatever. Whatever works for you, whatever you can you know, find easy to work with. Say chunks of wood, don't matter, but it's easy way. You know, just keep it less than one in two and you will be within what I would say the realistic, but realistically better range, let's call it that, because it's you know it works in real life. The biggest thing to remember with colour of roads is roads really, unless it's just freshly laid tarmac, asphalt, whatever you call it, if it's freshly laid, yes it might be black if it's any older than about i don't know a few months it's gray and it'll get lighter and lighter and lighter the more vehicles travel over it it'll get lighter it'll wear the tar away you'll be left with the pure with the raw stone surface showing it will get lighter and lighter and lighter some are actually not quite white but very very light gray um as on the road we live, live on it's just a cul-de-sac and they actually use quite light tarmac anyway. I don't know what my dad would know because he knows more about tarmac than I do. I might have to get him to help me write a blog thing about different types of asphalt and road surfaces because he knows that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, they're very, very light. Um, again, Google Maps, really good for this because you get a rough sample. If you use um, Photoshop, you might even not, well, Photoshop's a bit advanced probably, but if you use a photo editing package or a bit of graphic software, paint might be able to do it sam might be able to pipe up in a minute and say yes it can or not uh, you may be able to sample colors in a simple paint package i'm not sure whether microsoft paint does it possibly does if you can sample that you can get a rough idea for the color in rgb or whatever you can then print that off on a piece of paper and you can get you know, see what it would look like sample the color by doing a screenshot from google maps sample it print the sheet out in that color 
and you can match your paint whatever to mix a mix your paint to match that color um but yeah it's they're not it's not black don't use black please don't use black black just looks wrong if anything if you're going to use a gray paint you try start with a gray undercoat or a gray primer um a gray wood primer you can get a dark gray usually which is quite quite nice although when i went in b and to buy some of the week they didn't have any um, but a nice dark grey is a good starting point um, and then if you really want to get technical you need to look at the wear patterns on roads if you want to go for a proper realistic look I'm not a rivet counter I like things to look as realistic as they can be but obviously we're modelers and it's not possible to get everything perfect and I don't think it's worth life's too short to spend hours getting everything exactly bang on but if you can add a bit of weather into your two asphalt to show the wear patterns on the road it brings that level of realism up no end so just adding some lighter streaks basically so there we go there's roads we covered today what did we do we talked about um road width there is no hard and fast road width myrm.club forward slash roads takes you to the table and all the other information about colors and materials for roads and things like that use a vehicle really and go with what looks right you know work on spacing do that kind of thing gradients again no hard and fast rule but stick to anything shallower than one in two use lego blocks use whatever measurements you want but you know one in ten one in five one in twenty whatever it might be one block up for every 20 blocks across, one block up for every 10 blocks across, and go with that. In terms of transi transitions from your flat baseboard to the gradient, don't suddenly go in and then up the gradient. You want to kind of bend it in. And you can do that by using um, gray board, modeling card, or whatever, a thin modeling card, or various thicknesses of a different modeling card. Maybe make your main gradient from a thicker card, then use a thinner one, or even paper to give you a gentle transition from your baseboard up the gradient. You've got a nice smooth transition, it'll make it look less like a model. So when you get your camera out, you start taking pictures from road level, it'll look lovely, realistic. Not difficult to do, you're just using a bit of paper. Instead of just putting two pieces like that, you're just using a bit of paper to give you a gentle thing. I think that's it. I'm going to stop talking now because it must be coffee time. Um, next week we might cover um, colours and various other bits. Um, let's see what else we can think of as well but any other questions about roads let me know post them in the comments i'll publish this video anyway on here and i'll probably stick it on youtube and our other socials um and i'll see you again in the next episode of i'll call it realistically better 10 minute topic which is actually 29 minutes long oh well can't win them all anyway have a wonderful day thanks for watching give us a like please share it on your socials if you can there's a button below to share it um, but yeah, give us a like, subscribe to us on YouTube and things, and I'll see you um, next week. Have a brilliant one. All right.